Okay. Uh, I do have some questions about you, Ravel. Who are you and where did you come from? I... Ravel, am I? A maker and breaker of puzzles, a solver of what cannot be solved, a mind raveling and unraveling until the threads of thought are tied up like knots in a drunken man's hair. Ravel picks at one of her jagged hairs, wrapping it around her fingers. It is enough. Enough it is. But what are you? Night hag? She gives a ghastly smile, her yellow teeth like needles. I am but a woman who has sorely... Sorely? Sorely missed her beloved creation. Some have named me Crone, Grey Lady, Yaga Sister, Night Hag. But myself is my name. Ravel. Ravel who puzzles well. Providing conundrums to decipher and laying impossibilities low. But... Many things are said about we Grey Ladies. A race are we Night Hags, but an individual am I. Some call us evil of old, stalkers of mortal dreams, the kindly ones, ugly hideous things whose homes lie in the dark places of men's minds. But that means nothing to me. What would one such as you call one such as I, pretty thing? Hmm. Well, I would say... I, I don't think I'd try to answer that. I guess all descriptions are correct? Or just lie and say I would call you... Yeah, we'll manipulate. Bravo is silent for a moment, then she cackles. Oh, you are a diamond, my precious songbird. You make the centuries worthwhile. How sweetly you sing these tired ears of a feasted only on silence and a slow creep of black barb spreading. Bravo smiles. Yet you lie to me. Do you think I care for truths? Deceit is beautiful to me, Songbird. And Ravel loves to hear you say such things. She does. Ugly I may be. Yet ugly I need not be, pretty thing. My shape is but water to my will, and I may reweave its fib fibers to a more pleasing tapestry. She glances at Fall from Grace and smiles and licks her lips. Yes. In knowing the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. Ravel has melted into fall from grace, taking on her demeanor, her features, her clothes. Is this shape more pleasing? Ravel smiles, her teeth now a brilliant, perfect white, the lips with just a hint of red. So cultured and breathtaking. She motions soup to come closer. Come, my precious man. My lips do not burn with abyssal torments. Lay her lips upon mine. Um, yeah, I think we just say, no. Mayhap, is it the rougher woman that you crave? The one of passionate fire? She glances at Anna, who stiffens as Ravel's gaze pins her. Mayhap it is her that whets your appetite. Ravel, stop this. Hmm. Ravel has melted into Anna's shape, taking on her demeanor. Her features, her leather vest. Is it the rough-edged woman that you crave? The one for whom age has yet not yet tempered her passions? Anna's ravels, tail flicks as if in anticipation. Come, caress my lips with your own, and I shall please you. Uh, no. You blink, and Ravel has twisted back into her original form. A difficult man to please, are you? Ha! And wonder do they why there are no males of our kind. What other shapes can you have you turned yourself into? Maybe some. Mabeth none. Revel seems confused by the question. I've not remembered much. I've neen, Iveen Iveen, mayhap? Neither Smarta nor Marta. So many threads and branchings, so many ravels, always stitching and melding and growing my forms. Mebeth? You were Mebeth? 
That may have been one of my names, yes? Rava looks more confused. Her black veined eyes becoming misty. Names are difficult to remember. Her voice becomes faint. I calling it across a great distance. Hmm. Mabeth was kind to me and helped me, Ravel. That means you helped me. I thank you. I don't think I'd say I thank you. I would say this. Mabeth was kind in to me and helped me, Ravel. As you mentioned, Mabeth, all color seems to bleed out of Ravel's face until she is gray and ashen. Literally. It's like the color just vanished. Just like Mabeth, as I recall. And who might you be, hmm? Does your path bring you back to old Mabeth's door, child? Uh, yes. I can to learn more of the art. Pah, I am but a midwife child. Such power as the art commands is much beyond me. No, I don't think so. I think you have... A lot more to teach me than you realize. Much more. Then comes a question like an echo. You want to learn the art, you do? Why do you want to learn such things? And the echo is because I need, may need it to solve the mystery of who I am. After a moment, whoever this is nods. The art may help, it may not. And you must not rely on it to solve all your problems. She sighs. Child, it's most like only going to add another chip to your pile of questions. But if you know, then listen. Updated my journal. She whispered something, and now you feel different. Changed somehow. She told you something horrible, something about how the planes work, but your mind was shut out of her words. And you cannot recall them. Just thinking about them sets your heart pounding. Ravel told you something you're not sure anyone was ever meant to know. She's watching you, studying you. What other shapes have you been, Ravel? You were the barmy simstress in the bar buried village, Marta? That may have been one of my names, yes? She looks more confused, her black veined eyes becoming misty. Names are difficult to remember. Marta was barmy Ravel, but she was not unkind and not unhelpful. As you say her name, Ravel's same face seems to shift. Her blue skin sags until she's wearing the same sour, curd-faced expression you saw on Marta's face. Come now, don't be all difficult on Marta. She raises her the talon of her index finger like a scalpel and advances upon you. False, nasty corpse. Stand our ground. The talon jabs into the abdomen, then pulls it brutally downward in a solid motion. But there is no pain. You watch as your skin peels slowly back from her touch. No blood issues from the wound. Look at this, Marta. Look at this. Ravel's free hand digs into your chest, where she loops your intestines like up like yarn, then plucks them from your stomach. As she does, your stomach seals up as if time was going backwards. Marta, or Ravel, holds up your intestines like a trophy. Pretty, pretty. A eh, Marta? One should swallow such a thing. No, no. <laughs> Can I have those back, please? I might need them later. She hands you your ropey mess. Despite the freshness, the fluid surrounding your intestines have dried up like resin. It feels more like a loop of glazed rope. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'll treasure this always. Um... Alright. I had some other questions. Uh, can you teach me some of the art? She frowns disapprovingly, her bluish skin twisting like a rag. Does Ravel know the art? Is your mind gone a way out of mortality? A thing all up and lost? I've forgotten more of the art than you shall. She jabs you with one of her talons. Ever. She jabs you again. No. More than you shall ever know. Can you teach me some of the art, then? She now has her veined eyes, studying you. Mayhap I could be persuaded by one such as you, though any other would not have such a chance, nor the boon I offer. Are you a rudimentary student in the arts, or am I facing a tried, true, and hard, a tired, a 
tired master? <laughs> um, who would not have such a chance, nor the boon I offer? Hmm, are you a rudimentary student here, or am I facing a tried and true and tired? Um, you would say beautiful ravel, because we're... Yeah, a master in the arts, beautiful ravel. Try to play ourselves up a bit. I think that's how we would view ourselves. Flatterer, and yet your warm words warm me. Her voice changes, alternating in pitch like someone plucking a stringed instrument. Much have I learned tending this garden, charms and incantations distilled from the barbs. Uh, she's humming. Rhyming, swaying ways of the consonants, constants, and motions that bring briars to your aid. Listen, the branches will speak of it. And as you close your eyes and listen, a great trembling passes through you, as if dozens of barbed snakes were burrowing inside your flesh. Just when you think the pain is no more than you can bear, is more than you can bear, you suddenly instinctively begin humming the same tune that Ravel did, and the pain ebbs. In the distance of the maze, you can hear the clicking of the tree creatures, as if responding to your call. She watches you with a curious light in her black, veined eyes. Such power! She gives a soft hiss, as if in wonder, and her lips peel back in a smile. And it touches all that hear it. You are powerful, my precious man. So powerful. One day, even the plains may bend to your will. Hmm. Uh. I do not wish such a thing, Ravel. There are many who would walk that path, but not I? Or... The day the plane spent to me is not long in coming, Ravel. The more my memories return to me, so shall my power grow until none shall stop me. Is this like a good and evil choice? Uh. Well, I wouldn't rule out bending the planes to achieve our goals. So for that reason, I'll go with two. Ravel nods, then nods at your hand, which to your surprise holds a number of black barbed seeds. Take those seeds, use them as you will, and to this I grant an additional boon. She plucks a hair from her head and takes a handful of the seeds, places them in her palm, and then crushes them. A small trail of blackish blood runs from her hand, and when she opens it, there is no wound, only a necklace of black barbs woven around a lock of Ravel's grey hair. Take this. It is of me, and it will serve you well. Updated my journal. Okay, lots of items gained. Do not Use not all of them, for they may prove more useful in other places in this maze. But if powerful you are, these places you will find. Okay, I had other questions. Why were you imprisoned? I think we've seen this. Oh! I tried to help the Lady of Pain, and she kindly did not take to it. My offering of help was unwelcome. I tried to set her free. Sigil is the cage, a city of doors and locks. It's a prison for her. It must be. Mustn't it be? Why else call a city of Sigil the cage? And who is caged? The lady. A prison so small for one so great. Unjustness. Wrongness. Intolerable to torment a woman thusly. Hmm. I tried to break the cage, let the lady go free. <coughs> shoo shoo, O oh pained woman. Let Sigil's ring be broken so you might fly far from its filthy streets and a stupid dabus that dare not speak in words for fear their thoughts would be overheard. Her hands slowly stop their shooing motion and she gives a slow sigh. Before I could finish, I have found myself here and my memories none the better for the trip. Much has slipped away, much forgotten. Yes, it was. Is? Was? She smiles with her yellow teeth. The dwindling of memory has become a comfort to these old bones. Much have I forgotten. I am fortunate in that I still remember you. 
Okay, but why did you try to free journal. the Lady of Pain? Her voice drops, almost reprimanding. I resent anyone, even a power, being imprisoned, and think that all, everyone, whether stones, shores, or quiet-bladed ladies, should be free. Some have said more fool, I. Why risk such a thing, they said. Uh. Hmm. Is that what you were trying to do when I met you so long ago? Were you trying to set me free? No. Uh. Hmm. I think we'll say, I think you tried, you did the right thing trying to set her free, Ravel. I'm glad that we share like mind and view like minded on this matter. Yet, when I cannot let matters well enough alone, it seems to mine eyes that many are the lives and dreams that have are left in pieces on the ground. Hmm. Is that why you were trying to do when I met you so long ago? Uh, I see no fault in your attentions. Or I only see strength. Yeah, this is this is one I'll say. So you're at fault, Ravel. At least you tried, where others would have lacked the courage. I see no fault in your intentions. In fact, I see only strength. She stares at you in silence for a moment, then she cackles to herself. Such honeyed words! How I have missed you, my precious half-man! You sing so sweetly. Stone would give up its blood for you. Um... What is this place? Yeah. She gestures around her. Once a maze of lifeless stone it was. Featureless but small black seed was wound in my hair when I came to this place. And it grew strong amongst the stone. Flourishing, flourishing. Until it ran thick through the maze like the unraveling hair of a crone. And so this maze of another becomes my garden. Okay. Thank you for the information you have given me. No. I, ju I think our character would just say, Ravel, I must leave now. I don't think we would say thank you. Hold. Ravel's voice drops to a low hiss, like that of a serpent. The most important question you have yet to ask, my precious man. Has it occurred to you yet? Yes, I need to know how to leave this place. Do you know how to answer this question? I know the branchings of this place, the twistings and bendings and burrowings. Though there are no leaves here, one may take their leaf may take their leave when they wish it. Interesting plain words. So you do know how to leave. Wrap your hands about you like branches. Make them encircle your chest like a cage. Step from the edge of the maze into darkness, and to another cage shall your body sh go. A simple leaving, but there is no return when that final step is taken. So take heed and take what you need before you take the step. Uh, which of the edges of the maze do I leave by? Which, a question posed to the witch. Which? One of the edges know not I. The remembering of which has failed me, and the edges of the maze have had little to say on the matter. Okay, so if you've known how to leave, then why haven't you left? Why stay when one can leave, is your question to me? She breaks into a crooked smile, displaying a row of fangs. I turn the question upon its head and send it scurrying back to you. The answer lies not in the staying or leaving, but in the causes and reasonings, my precious half-man. It is a want, a once want, but not a now want. And more than more, more and more and more, a not, not, knotted want. What do I need that lies beyond my brambled walls? It is a cruel, jagged world beyond the edges of this maze, and Ravel has pulled enough of its shards from her skin. Okay, we'll just say goodbye. She gives a crooked smile, all tusks, and then gives a soft, soft cackle. It is I who thanks you, my precious man. Long has it been such sweet flattery has been brought to this maze. I wish to grant you a boon, my songbird. 
Oh, a boon will gladly accept any gifts you wish to give. Then listen to me. Close your eyes and I shall let you see the nature of the multiverse. I feel stronger. Okay, that's two wisdom increases permanent. Okay, you close your eyes and as you do, you feel a sharp stabbing pain in your right eye. Your eye, one of your eyes, opens. When you see Ravel before you, her blood red eyes gleaming with delight. One of her talons is extended and tipped with your blood, and an eyeball, yours. What did you do? A boon I have granted, Songbird. A twist of perception, a tap into branches of the mind, a tap into the roots of Ravel's knowing have I granted you. A piece of me. She takes the eyeball, and you watch in disgust as she pulls forth a black seed and places them both in her left palm. With a grotesque smile, she crushes two of them with a sickening crunch. Ah. Uh, we should give it back. Of course, precious man. She opens her palm, and your eyes lie there, seemingly untouched, staring at you. She places it between her thumb and forefinger, and then before you can react, she stabs it into your empty eye socket. Updated my journal. A piece of me lies in your good eye, precious man. When you see the plane through the eye, you will understand more than you once did. Wiser you will be, and more experience of the planes and their turnings will you understand. And that is all. Okay, farewell. <sighs> As you are about to utter your farewell, you suddenly feel a crawling sensation in your skull. And you notice that her eyes have taken on a strange predatory fire. 